Welcome to The Trade. Let's get to the uh, news that traders are watching out there today. Tesla expected to report its lowest gross profit margin in more than six years after a chaotic week that's included major layoffs, vehicle price cuts and urgent calls by investors for clarity on product strategy. European Central Bank officials are sticking to plans to cut interest rates multiple times this year, even as higher U.S. inflation delays a pivot to looser policy by the U.S. Federal Reserve and tensions in the Middle East keep oil prices high. Verizon lost fewer than expected wireless subscribers and beat estimates for quarterly profit in its earnings numbers thanks to its flexible plans and streaming bundles offering discounted pricing for services such as Netflix and Warner Brothers Discovery Max. And traders who bet against the Magnificent Seven group of US big tech stocks have booked their biggest ever weekly profit of more than $10 billion last week. The biggest gains coming from their short position in shares of NVIDIA and Tesla, Ortex uh, data showed. All right, let's get to the charts that matter now, keeping a firm focus in inflation with CPI numbers due tomorrow. Peter Maguire of XM joins me now. Uh, let's kick it off because we are expecting this key inflation print uh, going to be potentially another very key metric for the RBA, Peter. Absolutely, Juliet. I tell you what, it's been sticking and that's the issue that they've got to face. And uh, whether it's just going to that same momentum that what we experienced in December running forward, you know, that'll be the fourth straight month. So that stickiness, the RBA is prompting, you know, one more rate hike possibly uh, later in the year. But we've just got to see how that rolls. And, uh, you know, we've got to see naturally how the U.S. plays and other central banks and the whole storyline. You know, you've got consumer price index. It's around about 3.4 percent year on year since December. And uh, we're saying that, you know, March will be around that sort of figure as well. So, uh, yeah, let's see when it drops. And of course, that's going to play into the Aussie, which has been kind of whip sort of later, particularly amongst yeah. this uh, Middle East tension. And then uh, some of that repricing that we've seen. What are you seeing in the Aussie? Well, you know, that's been a great trade because it has shown all of that volatility and, you know, the uh, where it sits at the moment, you know, it's really tight, but it's offering plenty of movement. And I think that that's, you know, in a tight band, that is. Whilst a move above 65, it eliminates, you know, downside risk. The overcoming the 50 and the 200-day moving average is duly out of the big points. And they've converged around that, you know, 65, 30. So you've got descending trend lines and slightly higher than 65, 50 could prove quite challenging. But the big picture is where does the US dollar play over the next couple of days also because uh, it's had a nice move to the upside and I think that's going to continue. Yeah, indeed. And when we look at um, cross pairs, we'll, we'll get to the US dollar in a moment, but I know that we wanted to look at the, the Eurozone flash PMIs as well. And I guess the effects that we've seen on both uh, the Euro pound pair as well. Yes, exactly. You know, when you're looking at those uh, PMIs, you're sitting there, manufacturing's running around about 46.5 for April. Uh, whereas you've got the uh, the other side of it as far as services, that's far healthier, nearly at 52. So there's the anything above, for all the viewers, anything above 50 is uh, expansion, anything below 50 naturally contraction. So that's where we're looking, Juliet, and we've got to see how that um, performs. And then naturally, you know, the overall theme coming out of the Eurozone, what's the storyline, how it all matters, and naturally... Uh, you know, what does it do to the value of the euro? Will that continue to have a downdraft or are we going to look at a little bit of, you know, um, strength possibly from other, you know, other markets? And does that mean that you see euro dollar then kind of move sideways, Peter? Well, that lost 2% nearly last week. So I feel as though it possibly will. You might see a little bit of, you know, sideways movement. And there's the first part of it. You need to be, you know, really conscious as far as that, euro a euro dollar but the other side of course is is if that continues then uh in the sense of sideways it's not bad for traders and you can offer you know option strategies but if you see a blowout either side then that really creates the opportunity and we've just got to see again what happens with dollar what the thoughts are as far as eurozone and uh you know you've um again just waiting to see how it all rolls the chart tells a story but uh, that, you know, for all the traders out there, study them closely because there's, uh, again, plenty of opportunity. And Peter, we've been watching so much what's been happening with dollar yen and yen, of course, at these 34 year lows. What about euro yen? How's that trade faring? 
Well, the euro yen is an interesting one, Juliet, because you've seen quite uh, quite significant moves. I made some notes on that one. And really, the storyline is what happens as far as intervention from the Japanese and uh, you know, we're really, we're, there's a big chance you'll test that 165.34 high, uh, the growing intervention threat as far as Bank of Japan, what do they do? Is it going to be 155 against the dollar? Where do we see some sort of action from the Bank of Japan? And it's edging higher. Bulls are apparently preparing to challenge the recent highs uh, of that 165 sort of handle. So, you know, you've got verbal commentary coming out of Japan and the uh, naturally those officials and, uh, you know, it's countdown to the week's BOJ meeting and the dovish commentary from the ECB members are keeping, you know, the door open to more volatility and more sessions, I think, of uh, possibility of, you know, nice nice moves either side, you know, upsides and downsides. Just keep a close eye on the Bollinger Bands as well, Juliet. All right. Love a Bollinger Band feeder. Thank you so much for your insights again on AusViz. Uh, that does it for this episode of The Trade. Be sure to join us again tomorrow.